Awesome. So next up is going to be Giotti Bansal uh, from Traceable. Uh, he is going to be uh, presenting uh, as well on a very important time, Nate, basically. Giotti is a good, a good friend of mine. Uh, know him and his team at Traceable very well. They're doing some amazing things over there. Giotti, like I said in my previous introduction, I hate it when people introduce me. No <laughs> one knows you better than you. So uh, thank you for being here at API Day today. I want to remind our audience, please make sure to post your questions into the uh, Q&A tab uh, uh, in your application within Hopin. And uh, yeah, with with that, I'll go ahead and give the stage to Yodi. Hey, uh, good to see you, Alyssa, and uh, very uh, happy to be here and talking about traceable and API security. Uh, so uh, my background, uh, I'm a I'm a engineer and software architect by training. Uh, I started AppDynamics uh, about 10 years, 12 years ago now, and AppDynamics uh, was among the original distributed tracing, observability, instrumentation uh, companies. And AppDynamics uh, was, uh, I was founder and CEO right through the acquisition uh, uh, by Cisco in 2017. After that, I also started another company which is focused on DevOps, CI, CD space, called Harness. And uh, you know, I, I look at uh, you know solving some of these bigger problems that we are dealing with as as software industry or as uh, you know uh, uh, keepers of uh, digital transformation and moving our our lives forward with software. Right? And I always believe you know application security, API security was becoming this major major next frontier of uh, you know what almost every software engineering organization has to has to do and that's uh, uh that's the genesis of uh, uh, starting uh, 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 starting uh, traceable uh, to try to solve this so what what traceable does is to helps you manage your application and api security risk in a very very holistic way uh, if you look at like the solutions like waf and rasp uh, they were designed for a time uh, when application architectures were much, much simpler. You had web clients talking uh, you know, uh, through the uh, through HTTP uh, as the main protocol. You can mostly secure through parameter. And the attacks that these solutions help manage were based on simpler web traffic, right? The, you know, your cross-site scripting, SQL injections, remote file inclusion, et cetera. Right? And, the, and the legacy solutions uh, you know, somewhat will manage these attacks, uh, attacks but now the world that we operate in today is not the same world anymore. Right? If, you, if you look at the, the new world, uh, it's it's almost 100% getting cloud native. You know, uh, lots and lots of microservices. You know, tens or hundreds of microservices, and now you have thousands and thousands of APIs on top of these microservices. And every API, every microservice is unique. You know, the the logic that they implement is unique. The people who work on them are you know uh, implement them at different levels of security. And these APIs, they introduce a whole new attack surface. And all the legacy solution, your RASP and WAF and the kind of the legacy approaches, they really fall short in protecting this new attack surface because they just don't understand the API layer. And that's with API layer, we have a whole new set of uh, attack methods, right? And uh, the, 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 the most important new attack methods are the business logic attack, uh, attacks that you, they use the APIs in a way they were written. So it seems all normal but really you're exploiting and manipulating the APIs. So such as your, you know, your broken object level uh, authorization, uh, mass assignment, uh, excessive data exposure. If you've heard of uh, OWASP top 10, there's now OWASP API top 10 that is really focused on these kind of attacks. And to do these, uh, uh, to protect you against these emerging threads at the API layer, you really need user tracking and deep application context. So um, before I go into you know how we th th think of doing, it, I have a few questions here just to keep it a little bit fun and interactive. Uh, next year, what would be the single most frequent attack vector? And uh, uh, ransomware, phishing, API abuse, insider threats. The Gartner answer for 2022 is uh, API abuse, number one uh, attack uh, attack vector, most frequent attack vector on most applications. Let's take another question here. What percentage of web traffic is uh, API? 33%, 56%, 83%, 95%. Uh, Akamai uh, web traffic stats from 90, from 2020 is uh, is 83%. Uh, so if you look at the combination of that, 83% of the traffic is APIs. 
And number one, uh, uh, you know, a, a threat vector is API abuse. We, you know, it's no surprise that we see all of these headlines over the last many years. You know, companies that like Apple and T-Mobile and Uber and Nissan and uh, Facebook, Shopify, all have been burned by API-related attacks. And you can bet they all had a RASP in place or a WAF in place or multiple of those in place uh, in, 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 in most cases, right? Uh, so here is an example of just one, uh, one, one attack. Just uh, a bad actor, you know, properly authenticates by joining with the referral API. And a new user ID is returned to the, uh, back to the client. What is expected is that the client will request the details of the authenticated user using the this get concern detail API here. And the API will return uh, the user's JSON, uh, which has the user's uh, information. And the client will filter out the, the, the information that is not needed and will display what is needed. But in a attack scenario, a bad actor will do it in a very different way. Bad actor requests a different user's details from the get concern detail API. The API uh, doesn't validate the authorization on the user to see the requested user's data. Uh, so it sends the requested user's JSON object and the bad actor has the private data they want. Right? So if you, if, you, if you look here, what happened, the vulnerabilities in the, in the way the developer uh, built the API, you had the broken object level authorization uh, that the API did not make sure that the current user uh, you know, had the authorization to get the data of only the 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 the, the you know uh, the, the user UID that they're sending, right? And another vulnerability was excessive data exposure. That the API was returning the entire user uh, entire user JSON instead of just the the fields that that are needed for this particular uh, use case here, right? So this this is a common example. This is how APIs are abused. You know that's the the fundamental problem with uh, understanding APIs. Uh, that you to block and detect these kind of attacks, you have to understand the logic of the application. Otherwise, the use of the API just look like normal communication. If someone is normally calling the API, it doesn't look like a uh, look like attack. Otherwise, right? And you can bet in this scenario, Uber had you know at least one WAF or multiple WAF and multiple RASP in place, and there is really no rule or policy you can define in a WAF that could that would catch this. Right? What you need is a next generation of application security. Uh, you know what we call it the generation three of application security. Generation three of app security solutions, they need to tackle this modern application security from our defense in depth approach. Uh, few, few things that have to be there. First is understand the APIs, the inventory of APIs, how the APIs are used, which ones are risky, why, uh, because APIs are, are now where attacks are happening. Second is be learning based not rule-based because applications, APIs, attacks are changing uh, really, really quickly. And uh, you know, uh, it's no rules can keep up with this thing now. Third is understand the data flow and risk because data is no longer just handed from one trusted server to another. It's passed between potentially hundreds of services using different APIs with different levels of protection. So you really, really have to understand the data flow. Uh, and the fourth is it has to protect and adapt at the speed of DevOps so that the DevSec and Ops teams can work together and you can keep your app secure with a, with a true DevSecOps uh, kind of model. And all this needs to come together to enable a solution that continuously learn and understand the application context from the, from the user to the backend code uh, that is, uh, that, that's being uh, executed. That's our solution, Traceable. Uh, Traceable enables you to gain control of your application and API risk by bringing you visibility, protection, and analytics. Visibility enables you to see from edge to code. Remember, you can't secure what you don't know what you have. So, um, you know, a real-time view of how everything is connected, a double click into the deep details of the underlying APIs, including risk assessment of every endpoint. Then you have protection. Protection is going to replace your old WAF and RASP. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it protects you against the top 10 API attacks as, you know, the, as defined by the OWASP top 10 API attacks the sophisticated business logic attacks, as well you, as your traditional OWASP uh, top uh, 10 attacks as well. Uh, the key is that uh, Traceable uses AI-first detection. So no rules uh, required at all, although you can have them uh, you know, if you want to really use them. Uh, and very AI-first uh, approach that enables protection against known and unknown attacks, low false positives, 
and is constantly adapting its defenses uh, uh, with, 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 with AI. And then finally, analytics. All of this data we have about you know, all the transactions that are happening can be very helpful in understanding the impact and resolving problems. So Traceable can provide DevSec and Ops a shared explorable view of all of these details. It makes forensics and threat hunting much more efficient, you know, with detailed information about security events and all the context around them, teams can now understand and resolve vulnerabilities much, much quicker. This is all built on distributed tracing as the foundational technology. Uh, and as I talk about, you know, my background, my experience uh, before starting Traceable and a lot of our team comes from the world of distributed tracing uh, with companies like AppDynamics. And we have made that as the foundational technology on how we secure these uh, applications and, and, and APIs. Distributed tracing, the way it works is you put these very lightweight agents uh, in, your, in your code, on your proxies, on your gateways. Uh, you know, there are different varieties of agents that you can, uh, that, that, uh, that you could very quickly put. And in a matter of minutes, and normally in less than 10 minutes, uh, you know, uh, uh, it allows us to build a full application context, uh, which is key to understand the developer intent and the application flow. It enables us to track the transactions and data from user to backend and back. Uh, it, uh, you know, across all the distributed components of the application landscape. This full application uh, context comes from knowing several things. Uh, number one is user activity. What are the clients? What are their roles? Uh, you know, what are the permissions? What activity are they doing? Second is API activity. What API calls are being made at the edge? Uh, what are internal APIs? What is the sequence of calls between multiple APIs? Third is data flow. Where is your data flowing? Uh, when does it leave your control? Which APIs are accessing it? And then finally, fourth is code execution. What happening during execution? Which parameters get used? What do requests and responses look like? Uh, what does, you know, uh, are there errors happening in the code? You know, what does latency look like? Uh, distributed tracing provides us all of this data. And this wealth of data is fed into our traceable AI platform, which is our security focused AI engine. The traceable AI behavior engine takes the distributed tracing inputs along with many other external inputs and creates understanding of API behavior, uh, its uh, uh, user behavior, data, be data behavior, code behavior, API risk pos uh, posture, and user trust. Together, all of this allows us to now better detect and protect the uh, applications and APIs uh, with capabilities uh, such as uh, false positive reduction, uh, suspicious activity flagging, uh, business logic attack detection, ATO detection, etc. And this is, you know, uh, becomes a very powerful platform for us to uh, secure all your applications uh, and uh, all your APIs in a fundamentally very different way than how it's been done uh, done before. Where we are heading at Traceable uh, to complete the, the API security uh, picture for you is, uh, is uh, that because we have all the data about how the application runs and all of the application understanding and context, we believe we have uh, much more to offer further left in the STLC as well, uh, which is earlier detection of vulnerabilities and use of risky APIs, earlier detection of changes that will lead to insecure application, uh, ability to focus on which API needs to actually have tests run on them based on uh, you know what changed, uh, and we are so we are we are we are uh, con uh, you know uh, constantly expanding our platform to shift our capabilities uh, more and more left in the SDLC cycle. So you get a get get a, get a complete API uh, security uh, uh, picture you know from you know while you know when developers are developing and and shipping something in your ci cd process to when things go in production and then closing the loop completely that what happens in production you can feed it back into your into into your dev cycle uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to fix that i uh, would we'll, we'll love to hear any 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 thoughts uh, you know on 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 this from uh, uh, from the, from the audience here and now you might be thinking this all sounds great but where does traceable fits among you know the the current processes and tools that you have if you look at the, the life cycle of an application, you have the pre-production, plan, build, test, which is what the dev and the DevOps typically, right? And then you have production, which is the deployment and running, which is the ops part of DevOps. And then you have to the day-to-day -day operations, uh, which is the operating and monitoring, 
you know, which is the day two or the, the, the other part of ops and DevOps are sometimes called SRE, uh, you know, uh, 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 these days, right? So what the, the some of the typical application security tools that you would use in these stages, uh, you know, are, you know, your IS, SAS, DAS, you know, you have your API security, uh, the BAFRASP, you know, some of the, the SIMS or APM for the day-to-day -day operations. And where traceable fits in is a is a is a holistic uh, application security API security approach across many of these. Uh, so you can get a in one single uh, you know product uh, you know very uh, powerful comprehensive control and management around your uh, API and uh, application security posture. Where does this all bring us? Application security is harder than ever before. Uh, traceable can. Uh, help you to protect your business, minimize your financial risk, reduce your operational costs, and align your dev, sec, and ops, ops teams. Uh, here is what a few of our customers have had to say. Uh, Next Gen, uh, real estate broker, Hauser, loves how Traceable's app and API visibility helps them proactively find and fix vulnerabilities. Uh, marketing and data uh, tech company, Nextrol, they value the deep understanding of what is happening with their applications uh, that they got from traceables, uh, you know, uh, you know, a technology here. So more evidence that this is real, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's, uh, and we we love to uh, we love to show more and more, uh, you know, around around our product and how it how it works. Uh, if you if you want to learn more, uh, you know, around API security, how traceable can help. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, you know, we we, uh, we we have a workshop later on today, so please join us in the in in the workshop. This workshop will explore the OWASP API top ten, the new security challenges and strategies to understand the application, how it's changing, how to detect anomalies, how to block threats, and how do you make business more secure and and, and resilient. Uh, this is uh, flying blind, the case for API security and observability. So look for it, and uh, we'd love to have uh, in our uh, uh, our team lead you through uh, in a more interactive manner. How does this, uh, this all work and how does this all come together? Uh, thank you. Awesome, Jody. Thanks for bringing up this uh, important topic. You know, uh, one of the things that I've always been a big believer in is making sure that you've got the right tool for the job. So I'm I, I'm uh, subscribed to the same school of thought that you do. That you know, rules based, legacy based security controls simply just don't work for uh, detecting you know modern day threats against APIs. Um, so we had some good questions coming from the audience. Um, you know, you touched on some great points regarding legacy security controls. Um, why do you believe that WAFs are uh, insufficient uh, uh, of a tool for detecting uh, attacks against APIs? Um, how, how do they work versus modern day security controls for detecting things like BOLA or broken object level authorization? And do you think a new generation of WAFs will be created that can? Uh, that's a that's a that's a great question. You know, if you look at fundamentally a WAF, a WAF is looking at one HTTP request at a time. A request comes in, WAF looks at is this request good or bad based on some signature, you know, normally rules, some regular expression. Sometimes maybe you put, you know, the expression is learned through some basic ML of some kind in a in the ng WAF kind of thing. But all of these BOLA kind of attacks, they you cannot detect by looking at one HTTP request at a time. You really have to build the entire user session. And the user session, not in the traditional definition of session, a user may come in, you know, call APIs, you know, in different times uh, and maybe doing different kind of things. Like, so if you look at a, you know, in a BOLA kind of attack, right? Where someone, uh, you know, uh, calls an API, gets an output of from that API. Now they are they are supposed to take that output from the API they called and call API two, and that's a normal behavior. But let's say they didn't take the right output and they call API two in a with a with a different user ID or a different object ID that then they should have. That's what a BOLA would be. Uh, for for a WAF to understand it, a WAF to understand built a sort of a learning model around how the interaction between API one and API two is typically done. What data is being transferred into it? You have to bring all of that into a into a central place, build the learning models, and kind of uh, uh, you know uh, do in real time across multiple HTTP requests, across multiple uh, you know across the entire API activity session. 
that's not what wafs are designed for that's where products like traceable come in you know sometimes people call us the next 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 generation of waf and someone can call us like that what we are doing is a, is the is the is really the evolution of the of what a waf could be we don't like to call ourselves that just so that you know it's, it's there, there is clarity in the market uh, the the other part is you know most of the wafs are not designed to see what happens downstream you know so the you know when we look at the the entire context is you have one request coming in but you have to do like look at across all the user activity and all the, the the entire api activity session but you also have to trace it downstream like what happens you know once the call comes in does it really make a downstream call somewhere is someone making you know call to send data outside of your system you know is it like in, is internally invoking the you know some uh, things that will access your pi data and wafs also are not looking at that they're only looking at the edge right so really what we right. believe is that the fundamental new set of solutions have to be you know that can do a distributed tracing kind of approach so you're not just looking at the edge you're looking at the entire stream of things and you're to giving that sort of, yes yeah so, to give you that sort of context and security right versus okay. you know whether something is good or bad right uh -huh. and understanding that context and you know it's interesting um because one of the questions that just came in was um you know you, we talk about web application firewalls and typical rules-based solutions, but what about API gateways? So if if you have your APIs behind an AWS API gateway, isn't that enough to protect the API from malicious use? Uh, I, I would say API gateways are even uh, even uh, more basic in many ways. You know, API gateways can do things like you know throttling the APIs. They would look at like you know uh, some kind of a basic uh, protection around APIs. But a BOLA, there is no way an API gateway understands what uh, you know how those kind of attacks, the business logic attacks, and API abuse can uh, can happen. Right. Because so that you really have to record the API behavior. You could trace it, record the API behavior, build the models, you know, the learning models on how people typically use your APIs, and then see the you know if there's anything different around it. So most API gateways are even uh, for you know and even behind when it comes to protecting against these kind of sophisticated attacks. Huh? Yeah, I'm always scared when uh, a, a security company or a product comes up and says, oh, we've added security as a feature. Uh, I, I don't believe that security <laughs> should ever be a feature of a product. It needs to be built from the ground up. And we have, uh, just two more minutes here. I want to cover one very last important question that came in. Why is continuous API discovery important? Why is it important to do continuous discovery? Yeah, um, that's a, a good question because APIs are changing all the time. You know, it's it's if you look at most app security teams or uh, they are you know small teams, they're constrained. You you normally would have like you know a few hundred developers, and you will have like you know four or five uh, app security people. Uh, and those a few hundred developers are changing APIs constantly. They are introducing new things around it. Sometimes they will add new data fields. New APIs are coming in. Internal APIs, external APIs. The whole software engineering uh, world is very API centric now. So most of the times, people just the app security teams don't even know what APIs are there, which APIs are has sensitive data, which APIs recently changed, and which APIs have like you know uh, have some vulnerabilities associated with them. That's why you have to constantly discover them, constantly figure out like which APIs are there, and and tell those app security teams like these are the ones that change. These are the three new APIs. You know you can't rely on the spec because the the spec you will get from the developers most of the times it. Uh, there's a high probability it would not be be accurate or it would not be up to date. So you really need a constantly, continuously, uh, you know, discovering kind of model around APIs. Awesome, JD. Well, it was really nice to have you here. Thank you for covering such an important. I know it's a very divisive topic and religious debate, especially for those on the other side of the fence uh, in the WAF companies yeah. and API management companies. So, um, thanks for uh, bringing up this topic, and uh, we hope to see you present at API Days again. Thanks for being here. Right, and thank you, Elisa. Thank thanks, Jerry.